Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at this Omega Seamaster Professional Diver Chronograph, 41.5 millimeters in stainless steel. This is part of the tail end of the generation of Omega Seamaster references that really helped to resurrect the Omega brand in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Now I had one of the original Omega Bond Seamasters and I own the watch to this day. It's been my companion for at this point over 12 years and I've been satisfied with the fit, the finish, the quality and the long wearing reliability of this watch. The bottom line is that these, this line of Omega Seamasters, the Seamaster Professionals, definitely drew their early aesthetic inspiration from the Bond, but this one's a particularly highly evolved version of the breed and I want to get into those distinctions in a moment after I discuss the fit of this watch. Now, it's very much traditional Bond Seamaster, 41.5 millimeter case. This one does wear a bit larger in as much as it's thicker, it's heavier, and it has a more substantial later variant of the Seamaster Professional bracelet that's a bit more like a Rolex Oyster 3-link than the original 5-link Bond bracelet. But on my wrist, which is 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters, you can see it's still a very good fit. Now, this watch and this case in particular were designed before sports watch sizes went outright bonkers. So although it is over 15 millimeters thick and it is going to be a bit of a challenge with any kind of tight sleeve or cuff, the watch does wear comfortably in terms of its lug-to-lug -lug stance on the wrist. You can see that the bracelet actually flares out quite a bit on both sides of my smallish wrist. So if you do have a smaller wrist, you can see there's still plenty of room to downsize and still wear this watch comfortably. One of the highlights of every Bond era Omega Seamaster really is the bracelet and the clasp combination. And this bracelet, again, a bit more like the Rolex Oyster, more refined with a tighter tolerance than the five link that originally shipped with the Bond Seamasters. It's beautiful. It's also discreet. It's got a matte and brushed finish to its entire surface that really plays down the, vis the visibility signature of the bracelet itself and leaves the emphasis on the watch head. But it is a silken thing, beautifully fi finished top and bottom. It's quite comfortable to wear and it's paired with a very nice clasp that is traditional to the Bond Seamaster series. And in this respect, it's exactly like my old 253180, the original Bond Seamaster very substantial, milled out of a solid piece with a very secure twin trigger release. You can see the strength of this milled out swing arm, very robust. I never had a sense in over a decade of owning and wearing this watch from everything including blizzards in New Hampshire to swim training in the Navy. Never once felt like it was going to come off my wrist and the diving extension on this clasp is one of the best in the business to this day. Very secure. Like everything else on this clasp, it feels over-engineered and overbuilt relative to the demands that you're going to put on it, even in the course of an active lifestyle. So a very, a very solid bracelet, probably even an upgrade in terms of substance over mine, with a clasp that's really stood the test of time. But the chronograph itself is a special piece because it represents how far the Seamaster Professionals, the 300 meter Seamasters, really elaborated from the Bond original. This one has larger, bolder numerals printed on the bezel. Although the bezel is the same size and the indexes and the hash marks are the same, the visibility factor is much higher in as much as the numerals are just that much larger. Still reflective metallic visibility is excellent. On the dial itself, this watch, again, represents a highly evolved version of the original Bond Seamaster. What were once printed indices and a printed Omega logo and marquee at 12 o'clock are now fully applied and diamond polished and heavily loomed. Not only is this watch built better than my old one, but it's more visible. From a practical standpoint, there are also advantages to having those huge plots for the Super Luminova luminant material. Likewise, broad arrow hands. While the skeleton versions on my original are beautiful and delicate, the broad arrows from a functional standpoint are definitely an upgrade for a sports watch. They're easier to see in the day, they're much easier to see at night, and they really change the look of the watch. They're a nice match for the bulk and the substance and the presence of these large trapezoid indices. Now, the rest of the dial is also a bit of a departure from what I once knew as the Bond, in as much as it's a beautiful black gloss. You may not be able to pick it up as much on the iPhone, but there is a reflectivity to this dial that changes its appearance compared to the matte blue with the engraved wave pattern of the original Bond Seamaster. 
It's a nice upscale look that pairs well with the gloss applied elements of the indices themselves as well as the Omega name and logo at 12. Finally, it is worth mentioning that it is a smooth surface compared to the texture of the early Bond Seamasters, which had that somewhat, let's, let's call it quirky, engraved wave logo. Omega fans love it, but the bottom line is that this cuts a much cleaner profile. It's a little bit more contemporary. Now outside, the look hasn't changed much from the early 90s when that first 41.5 millimeter Bond Seamaster Professional first dropped. The bottom line is that it is the same shape with the beveled lugs, proportions side to side. At 10 o'clock, you've still got the helium release valve. Always a great conversation piece, rarely a practical feature, but the bottom line is with Rolex charging more for this feature on the Sea Dweller relative to the Submariner, you always have to give Omega credit for including its standard, just cause. And the chronograph pushers themselves are a little bit of a a styling trick of the eye. While the crown itself is a screw down, the pushers are actually pseudo screw downs. So they have the shoulder and the knurling of a screw down key, but they actually operate, as you can see, in position just like this. So you don't want to use them underwater. They're not true screw downs, but they also save you the inconvenience of having to screw the crown out and in. And it matches the water resistance of any screw down crown on a conventional dive chronograph, and if you want to look at something like the Rolex Daytona, which only gives you 100 meters of water resistance in spite of screw-down crowns while dealing with the inconvenience of having to pull them out for function, it's got a leg up over the Daytona and other screw-down crown types in that respect. Again, 300 meters, 1,000 feet of water resistance. You don't have to screw down the crown or screw it out to use it, but you still get all that security when you jump in the pool. This Omega Seamaster Professional Diver Chronograph 41.5 millimeters is a great combination of the elements that are enduring and appealing and nostalgic about the Bond Seamaster series with a couple of modern refinements that have moved the ball and really moved the goalposts, raised the standard for the series. This example, which features the caliber 3301, also gives you a bit of an upgrade over some of those early Bond Seamasters. 3301 automatic 52 hour power reserve COSC rated Swiss chronometer. It has a jump date, but it also adds, again, compared to those early Bond Seamasters, instead of having a cam operated chronograph with a lateral clutch, now we're upgrading to a vertical clutch and we're upgrading to a column wheel. So it's crisp. You can see when I, when I stop it, you hear that nice crisp click. And when I start it, you can hear it as well. A crisp function selector, you also notice that when I stop the hand, there's no stagger. And when I start it, it doesn't jump. And that's because of the vertical clutch engagement mechanism, which, I should add, also allows you to run the chronograph continuously with no hazard to the movement. So if you do like having a center seconds hand, with this caliber 3301 Seamaster Professional Diver Chronograph, you have the ability to run the chrono continuously if you like the easy read of center seconds versus sub seconds at 9 o'clock. So you have that functional flexibility as well as watchmaking refinement within. So this Omega Seamaster Professional Diver Chronograph, again, 41.5 millimeters in stainless steel, represents something of a bargain in the modern sense. It's refined, it's upscale, it's got a look that's already stood the test of time. Having been around in one form or another, for over 20 years, this essential 41.5 millimeter Seamaster is definitely one for the ages, but with some of the changes that were made late in the life of the model, it nevertheless looks contemporary and it has the refinement that came into the series again later in its production cycle. And if that sounds like the watch you want, you can see it on our website, Watch You Want.